Hello. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 Character Recognition Awards Ceremony. My name is Wanda Summers-Wall, and I am the Executive Director of Synergy and Leadership Exchange. Thank you for joining us today for this virtual celebration. So, it's been a challenging 15 months, but we are excited to recognize some amazing schools, organizations, and individuals. Although we canceled the in-person celebration last year because of the pandemic restrictions, we are thrilled to be celebrating both the 2020 and the 2021 honorees today. We can bring you today's program because of the support of our fantastic sponsors and volunteers. First, we want to share a special thank you to Spire Credit Union and the U.S. Army Minneapolis Recruiting Battalion for their sponsorship of the Character Recognition Award Ceremony. We also want to thank and acknowledge the work of the 12 volunteers who evaluated the awards applications. Thank you to Sadie Fisher, Janet Carlson, Lonnie Scretner, Bridget Janscher, Darlene Forrest, Jan Amies, Doug Baden, Susan Larson, Orville Lindquist, Randy Markinson, Demetrios Vidal, and Cheryl Whitesett. Lastly, we want to thank the Minnesota Character Council. The Council advocates for positive character and ethical leadership development, and Synergy and Leadership Exchange provides administrative support for the group. So, a big thank you to members Dave Adney, Matt Bodstrom, Dave Foster, Michael Hartunian, Todd Lefko, Bill Metalfelt, Todd Otis, Dan Salverda, Jack Sarir, Barbara Shin, Steve Young, and Deborah Younger. Two council members passed away this year that we would also like to acknowledge. Those two members are Bob Brown and Don Craighead. Both were incredibly valued members and we will deeply miss them. We are pleased to have the Honorable Minnesota Secretary of State, Steve Simon, here with us today to share a greeting and congratulations. Secretary Simon. Thank you, Wanda, very much. I am happy to join you today in celebrating schools and community programs with exemplary character and ethical leadership development. It's been a hard year, let's face it. COVID-19 has affected our lives, our health, our jobs, our communities, and our schools. And the challenges have been unprecedented. There were no instruction manuals to tell us how to act or how to be in a once in a century pandemic. All of us had to adapt and pivot and learn and draw from within for inspiration. Uh, some people say that tough times and trials reveal your character and others say that those challenges develop your character. What we do know is that acting with compassion, caring and courage can have a ripple effect in inspiring others to act with good character as well. I believe that just as people have character, places do too. And part of what makes the state of Minnesota so special is that civic education uh, is a cornerstone for us. And I speak from experience. As Secretary of State, I like to say that I and we are in the democracy business. And Minnesota is a leader in that business. In 2020, for the third time in a row, Minnesota was number one in America in voter turnout. Uh, and that was even in a once in a century pandemic. So we saw Minnesotans leaned in and they made their voices heard. And that wasn't easy. It required extra effort by many people at many layers of government, in the private sector, among nonprofits, and it required strong character from so many people all over our state. We have long been home in Minnesota to responsible ethical leaders and residents who engage in civic life and contribute to our communities. We should be thankful and we should nurture the things that make that possible for us. Support for quality character education will strengthen Minnesota for generations to come. Congratulations to all the honorees for their achievements in building character strength and ethical leadership skills in Minnesota. Thank you, Secretary Simon. Next, I am delighted to introduce someone who is well known in Minnesota's youth development circles. Daryl Thompson is president of Boulder Options, a comprehensive youth mentoring program that works with at-risk youth 
in the Twin Cities and Rochester. Youth are matched with a caring adult mentor and introduced to an active, lifestyle-based program that provides guidance, support, and opportunities through one-on-one, -on -one, small group, and family-specific programming designed to help them make positive choices and live a healthier life. Thompson is often remembered as a leading rusher for the University of Minnesota Gopher football team and a first round draft pick of the Green Bay Packers. Thompson lives in Plymouth, Minnesota with his wife, Steph, and they have four children. In his time off, you might find Thompson enjoying yoga, fishing, or a round of golf. You can also hear Thompson as a Gopher game day football analyst on KFAN radio. Hello, my name is Daryl Thompson, president of Boulder Options former University of Minnesota football player and Green Bay Packer, and I'm honored to speak to you today, although it's virtual, that's where we're at nowadays, and character, that's why we're here. That's the reason that uh, you guys asked me to speak, and as I prepared for this speech, I thought about um, a lot of things, and probably the main piece that came back to me were my parents. I lost my mom 16 or 17 years ago, and I I actually called my dad when I was writing down my comments for this speech today, and he um, said some things that I agreed with, of course, like dads do. Um, and the first thing he said to me, he said, like, I think, give me the characteristics, dad. He's like, honesty, you, we have to be honest. It's something that we're, we're lacking and we're struggling with nowadays. We need honesty, we need integrity, and we need relationships. A lot of times it feels like me, to me nowadays, that we, Sometimes we'll tell someone something to get what we want in the short term. I think we all need to just look at ourselves and, and try not to do that, you know, and integrity. And this is something I think about. My wife says it to me all the time. Just say what you mean. Just say what you mean and mean what you say. And we'll be better as a community, as a country. And probably the last one, and I feel like I'm kind of plagiarizing what my dad said, but I do believe it's true. And he's just a big part of me. It's relationships. We have to have um, relationships if we're going to be um, good people. We're going to be able to connect with people. A coach, a teacher, a counselor that has a relationship is going to be a lot farther along than anyone else because we're not going to listen to anyone else unless we have a relationship. This piece, I, this is my own kind of belief, and I was thinking about what are great characteristics of an athlete? I mean, what makes someone like... It's not just the running and the jumping. I think that's a, quite honestly, I think that's a small piece of it. I think the number one attribute of a athlete that's going to be successful, that's going to be a successful high school player, successful college player, maybe even a pro player, the number one piece is discipline. And I don't mean discipline like, you know, running the hill or lifting weights. I mean, the number one discipline is actually listening to your coach. Listen to your coach. The coach actually knows I did not agree with every coach that I had on everything that I should be doing. But what I did learn is that once I turned my back and went back on the court or went back on the field, I was going to do what I felt like was a compromise maybe between me and the coach, or I might just do exactly what the coach said because he or she reminded me of something that we talked about in practice or that they noticed in film that maybe that I didn't notice. So that's the biggest part of discipline. The second thing is hard work. I had a mantra that when I was training and when I was young that said to me, and I'm trying to pass it on to my kids, work when they work, work when they rest. That is how you become the best. And I think you got to work hard. I didn't want to be tired. I didn't want to be run down during the game. I wanted to feel fresh. I wanted to feel good. And hard work also means hard rest. It means taking care of yourself. It means eating good. It means getting the rest you need. It means drinking enough water. It means taking care of your body. That's hard work too. It's not always easy. I'd much rather eat cupcakes and donuts than I would a sandwich and protein and um, you know bread and water and all those things. Sometimes it's not as fun, but you'll feel better when you're on the court. And probably the last piece, I think, when it comes to athletics is attention to detail. I mean, a lot of times we get out there and I was blessed when I was young. I didn't get challenged a lot. But as I got older and the competition got stiffer, I realized how important it was to have attention to detail, how important my technique was, how important it was to have the right footwork, 
how important follow through was. All those things matter as you move up in your level of competition. I kind of like to say, as I've gotten older, it's I want to be in the right place at the right time. And that means attention to detail. That means hard work. It means discipline, means listening to your coach. It might mean some film study on your own. How do I get better at what I'm doing? How can I improve myself? So when I think of successful coaches, I was lucky enough to play football in college. I played in the senior bowl and I rode every day on the bus and I sat next to Tony Dungy and he wasn't as big a deal then as he is now. He was the defensive um, uh, coach for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs back in uh, 1990. And we rode and we talked about the University of Minnesota because he was a gopher and I was a gopher and it was cool for him and I to just kind of chit chat. And I got drafted and I didn't play for Tony, but I had a good friend that played for the Minnesota Vikings. And he's like, what? I said, what makes Tony different? He said, you know, as a coach, he said he, he didn't holler, he didn't scream, but he made you think. And he said, one time, um, his name was Tanao, he said he dropped off into the flat. And Tony said, well, why did you go over there? He said, this coverage calls for you to um, come over here. But he asked him why. And then he gave pause and he listened to it my friend explained why he dropped over there. And then he proceeded to say, okay, I understand why you went over there. He said, let me explain to you why when you come here, it helps everyone else. And he explained it to, to now my buddy and also everyone else around them start to understand it's like, gosh, this is, he said, we're all like, we're connected. And we're all connected on the same page and we all drop to go to the right spot. He said, it limits what the offense can do. And he said, it was such a, like an eye opening moment for him you just couldn't believe it. So I think of, you know, Tony is one of the greatest, um, you know, he's a great dad. He's a great teacher. He's a great coach. Um, he's also a leader. Great man. Great man. I've learned a great deal from him from afar. So I haven't talked to him in over 20 years, but I still feel like I'm learning and growing from him every single time I get an opportunity. The importance of mentoring, it, I can't put enough on it. I just can't put enough um importance on the importance of being a mentor, someone who cares about you. Mentor is described in the dictionary as a wise and trusted friend. I broke it down into three categories. A mentor is someone that helps another person learn to believe in themselves. Everybody needs somebody that believes in them. Number two, someone to listen to them. I talked about earlier with Tony Dungy and myself. I've learned more from my staff at Boulder Options and I've been part of them. They come in with ideas. I think, oh, you've, you know, actually, we should probably do that. You know, you're right. We should do that. You need to listen. We need to listen. Well, number three, three. And I think this one might be the most important one. We need someone to care about someone else that might not normally be involved in your life. So I think if you care about someone, they're a lot less likely to do something that's dangerous in their life. So believing, listening, and caring, I think those are the three most important things. If you want to have good character, you want to care, you want to be honest, you want to have integrity, you want to have trust, you want to have all those things. So to the graduates and to the, um, the recipients of this award and the honorees, I say congratulations. Thank you for having me. I truly wish that I could be there in person. Thanks for everything. Have a great day and be nice to someone today. Peace. Thank you, Daryl, for sharing your amazing insights. Next, Barb Bursa, Synergy and Leadership Exchange Program Administrator, will be announcing the awards. Thank you, Wanda. Next is the awards presentation part of the program. We'll start with the 2020 and 2021 Minnesota Ethical Leadership Award. Each honoree will receive a plaque and a certificate of membership from Synergy and Leadership Exchange. The Minnesota Ethical Leadership Award was developed by the Minnesota Character Council in collaboration with Synergy and Leadership Exchange to spotlight character and ethical leadership development as measures of success and to celebrate exemplary community programs building these strengths and skills in its participants. Honorees are first nominated and then invited to apply. Applicants are evaluated by a blue ribbon panel of practitioners, community leaders, and past honorees. 32 programs have been recognized since the award began in 2011. 
let's begin with the 2020 honorees. The first recipient of the 2020 Minnesota Ethical Leadership Award is Being the Change, a program of YouThrive. Being the Change provides a structured group mentoring and leadership development program that develops social emotional skills through an action-based service learning format. Resources and curriculum used correlate with federal and state academic standards. Participants explore the work of Nobel Peace Prize laureates as inspiration to design their own community action project. Congratulations to Executive Director Donna Cook and all of the Being the Change team. The second recipient of the 2020 Minnesota Ethical Leadership Award is Girls on the Run Twin Cities. Girls on the Run inspires girls to be joyful, healthy, and confident using a fun, experience-based curriculum. The program uses running and other physical activities as a platform for teaching life skills and promoting holistic health outcomes for girls in grades three to eight. The 10-week curriculum includes lessons that specifically help girls improve in competence, confidence, caring, character, connection, and contribution. Congratulations to Executive Director Mary Uran and all of the Girls on the Run Twin Cities team. The third 2020 Minnesota Ethical Leadership Award honoree is the Ideal Center, a program of the Science Museum of Minnesota. The Ideal Center provides professional development to facilitate learning and growth around topics of inclusion, diversity, equity, access, and leadership. They equip participants with practical tools and strategies to create meaningful and lasting change for their organization. The Center's longest standing and most in-depth work has been with K-12 schools and districts through the PAGE program. Congratulations to Liesl Chapman and all of the Ideal Center team. Now we'll present the 2021 Minnesota Ethical Leadership Awards. The first honoree is Almas, which in English translates to Anglos Latinos Motivated to Succeed. This is a program at Henry High School in District 197. Almos fosters Latino student achievement, retention, cultural pride, and parent and student voice to build a sense of belonging in the school and community. The program creates leadership opportunities through community service, peer tutoring, folklore dance, and civic engagement. Alma seeks to challenge negative stereotypes, foster better communication between the school and parents, promote post-secondary success, establish a positive identity for Latino students, and strengthen families and communities. Congratulations to Director Robert Hansen and all of the Almas team. The second recipient of the 2021 Minnesota Ethical Leadership Award is a Minnesota Urban Debate League, a program of Augsburg University. Minnesota Urban Debate League addresses the inequity of access to academic competitive debate by providing programming opportunities to Twin Cities middle and high school students. The process of becoming a debater cultivates the leadership qualities of critical thinking, ethical argumentation, and empathy toward others. The program's mission is to empower students to become engaged learners, critical thinkers, and active global citizens who are effective advocates for themselves and their communities. Congratulations to Executive Director Amy Cram Helwich and all of the Minnesota Urban Debate League team. On behalf of Synergy and Leadership Exchange, congratulations to all the Minnesota Ethical Leadership Award honorees. Next, we'll present the 2020 and 2021 Minnesota Promising Practices Awards. Each honoree will receive a trophy and a membership certificate from Synergy and Leadership Exchange. The Minnesota Promising Practices Award recognizes schools that have developed and implemented a unique and effective practice that promotes character development and exemplifies one of the 11 principles of effective character education. This is modeled after the National Promising Practices Program from Character.org. 
Schools or youth serving organizations submit an application, which is evaluated by a blue ribbon panel of educators. Practices recommended for the award are, gener are shared on the Synergy and Leadership Exchange website as an idea generator for other educators. Today, we're pleased to present six promising practices, starting with the 2020 honorees. The first promising practice award goes to JJ Legacy School, formerly known as Brightwater Montessori School, for the practice Morning Drumline. Morning Drumline offers an empowering way to engage struggling students in a disciplined, confidence-building practice with the simultaneous benefit of energizing and unifying the greater learning community. Participants make a commitment to arrive early and welcome their peers with a rallying sound that literally drums up excitement and energy for the day ahead. Among participants, there's been a reduction in behavioral issues, increased attendance, improved grades, and a bolstered sense of self, discipline, and spirit. Congratulations to head of school, Tanisha Abdur Salam and the rest of the JJ Legacy School team. The second Promising Practices Award goes to Cologne Academy for Unity Week. Unity Week was inspired by Pacer's idea of coming together as a community against bullying and standing united for kindness, acceptance, and inclusion. All students participate in activities and discussions centered around the topic of unity and how, as a school, they can create a welcoming community for all. Students learn about the character traits of kindness, acceptance, and inclusion, and identify how they will exemplify these traits in their lives. Through this practice, students gain a deeper perspective of how their actions affect others and are an outward display of their character. Congratulations to Executive Director Lynn Peterson and the rest of the Cologne Academy team. The third Promising Practices honoree is Duluth Edison Charter School's Rally Academy for their practice Reading Activators. Reading Activators is a student-led literacy program designed to provide individualized reading support and coaching to kindergarten and first grade students. Fourth and fifth grade students apply to become activators, receive training, get paired with a younger student, and meet daily for 10 minutes to provide support on reading skills that need strengthening, encouragement in the area of reading, or general enrichment. The practice fosters bonds between the younger and older students, cultivates leadership skills in older students, and helps younger students become better readers. Congratulations to DECS Head of School, Bonnie Jorgensen, and the rest of the Rally Academy team. The fourth Minnesota Promising Practices honoree is I.J. Holton Intermediate School for the Practice Freedom Week. Each year, students are immersed in learning about the freedoms and rights of Americans. Freedom Week kicks off with an assembly by the local VFW and Legion. Through guest speakers, decorating the entire building, and social studies lessons, students are engrossed in the concept that freedom isn't free. Students learn about the sacrifices that have been made in order to have those freedoms and what happens when you lose them. Congratulations to teacher David Brown and the rest of the IJ Holton Intermediate School team. The final 2020 Minnesota Practices, Promising Practices Award goes to Winstead and Humphrey Elementary Schools for the practice Laker Crowd Groups. Laker Crowd Groups provide guidance and support for students and build lasting relationships between students and staff at all grade levels. Multi-age groups of students meet once a month with one to two staff members for specific character building lessons and activities. Groups stay together during their years at elementary school. The practice has shown growth in building friendships, social skills, confidence, a growth mindset, and reducing and standing up against bullying. Congratulations to teacher Laura Hoyers, Principal Jen Olson, and the rest of the Winstead and Humphrey Elementary School teams. Minnesota Online High School, or Minnows, is the sole recipient of the 2021 Minnesota Promising Practices Award for the practice Minnows Peer Leaders Program. 
Minnow's Peer Leaders Program pair experienced students with incoming ninth grade and transfer students. Peer Leaders assist new students with the transition to online learning and help connect them to the school community. Participants gather both online and in person during the school year for character education and social activities. Congratulations to school social worker Amanda Seelin, Executive Director Alyssa Rafa, and the rest of the Minnows team. On behalf of Synergy and Leadership Exchange, congratulations to all the Minnesota Promising Practices honorees. Next, we'll honor two 2020 Minnesota Schools of Character. The State School of Character designation recognizes schools and districts that have demonstrated through a rigorous application and evaluation process a dedicated focus on character development and has had a positive effect on academic achievement, student behavior, and school climate. Synergy and Leadership Exchange is the state sponsor of the program and works in collaboration with Character.org, the program founder, to evaluate Minnesota schools and districts for state certification. The evaluation process includes expert review and detailed reports for school teams. We're delighted to have Lori Seufer, director of the Schools of Character program for Character.org, say a few words about the honorees. Take it away, Lori. Thank you, Barb. Since its inception, the Schools of Character program has positively impacted nearly 3 million students, staff, parents, and other community members. Nationally, 81 schools and seven districts received the School of Character designation in 2020. I'm delighted to introduce the first 2020 Minnesota School of Character, Cologne Academy. Cologne Academy is a charter school located in Cologne, Minnesota, serving students in grades K through eight. Founded in 2008 with a focus on character and academics, it has been a top performing school academically and is currently ranked in the top 4% of public school districts in Minnesota. Cologne Academy has made great strides in its character journey by thoughtfully implementing a school-wide program designed to meet the social, emotional, academic, and character development needs of its students. Monthly core virtues drive the mission of the school and what is expected from staff, students, and community. Integrating ethics into daily work and discussing behavior expectations that align with values for all settings are some good examples of their proactive approach to character development. One student shared, the sense of community, I feel, is the best part of attending Cologne Academy. We are not only being taught excellent academics, but we are being taught how to become people of character. We have learned how to give and get respect, work on service learning projects to show generosity, compassion, and diligence, and giving back to our community. Congratulations, Cologne Academy, for being named a 2020 Minnesota School of Character. The second school to be named a 2020 Minnesota School of Character is Wasika Junior and Senior High. Wasika Junior and Senior High serves nearly a thousand students in grades seven through 12. Its character journey began in 2009 when it was named an emerging school of character. The school has continued to use character development to drive positive results in academic student behavior and school climate. We are for the Blue Jay Way is the school motto encouraging all to respect yourself, others, property, and learning. These values are laid out and discussed with students so they understand the expectations and accountability standards. Service is a priority in every aspect of student life, and there are numerous examples of projects initiated by the students. When asked what he liked best about the school, one student shared, Wasika Junior and Senior High has a positive and welcoming atmosphere. The atmosphere has been built on a strong foundation by all our staff. This boosts the students' attitudes and positively impacts the learning environment. Recently retired principal Jean Swanson helped to influence many other schools around character education, not only in their own district, but across the state by presenting at numerous education conferences about their implementation of the 11 principles and how this framework has improved the climate and culture of the school. Congratulations, Wasika Junior and Senior High, for being named a 2020 Minnesota School of Character. Barb, I'm handing it back to you. Thank you, Lori, for taking the time to be with us today and for all you do for the state and national schools of character program. 
The final presentation today is the Champion of Character Award. This recognition honors individuals who consistently demonstrate positive character as a visible role model. Today, we'll celebrate two individuals who, through their many accomplishments, exemplify what it means to be a champion of character. Our first honoree is Don Salverda. Here to say a few words about Don is Spire Credit Union President and CEO, Dan Stoltz. Hi, Dan Stoltz from Aspire, and a huge congratulations to you, Don Salverda, for this tremendous honor receiving the Champion of Character Award this year. Wow, just so deserving. You know, when I look up the word positive character in my Webster Dictionary, it simply says Don Salverda. Don, you are amazing on so many levels. Here's a small sample of all the things that you've done to demonstrate positive character as a visible role model. Number one, you've attended the University of Minnesota and re received a degree in mechanical engineering. Number two, your career focused on leadership development and government service. And Don, you served in so many leadership role models in the private sector, public sector, as an elected official, in several community and professional organizations. Truly a servant leader. You know, you served 18 years as Ramsey County Commissioner, long-term Rotarian, JC's Chamber of Commerce, and founder and first president of the Roseville Area Optimist Club, which I'm a proud member because of you, Don. And when I think of you, Don, in your career, I think about so many things, but volunteerism, you believe that life is about giving, not getting. You know, your, your character matters. You talk about character all the time. You exemplify character, and you believe strongly that character development needs to be a higher priority in our schools, and so many of us agree with that. Don, you know character is taught or caught, and it's paramount, and you are a teacher of character. Don, you inspire me and so many others. You know, Don, there's a quote that you use from a great high school friend, Denny Sanford, and I've heard you use this quote many often, and it's fun. It says, we need to aspire to inspire before we expire. I like that, and I love that, and you exemplify that. You know, and I love coupling character with the word positivity. Absolutely paramount to leadership. Positivity, positive character. Positivity and character, that's a dynamic duo, and that's you, Don. I also want to personally thank you. You know, in business, we have a board of directors that govern, that really tell you what you should do and shouldn't do. I also believe that personally, we all need a board of directors, a personal board of directors. And Don, I want you to know you're on my personal board of directors because I can go to you, I trust you, and you believe in character, and that's paramount. So thank you so much. You know, lastly, everyone tries to define this word character. It's not hard. Character is doing right when nobody is looking. Again, congratulations, Don, and way to go on being a recipient of this year's Champion of Character Award. Thank you, Dan, and congratulations, Don. Our second Champion of Character honoree is Dr. Barbara Shin. Here to say a few words about Barbara is her friend and colleague, Dr. Carol Gupton. Thank you, Barb. I am honored to share a few words about Barbara. It is no surprise to me that she is receiving this award as she is an exemplary model of character. Barbara spent 30 years in the Minneapolis Public Schools as an elementary teacher and school administrator and has served as faculty member at Augsburg College, University of St. Thomas, and Hamlin University. She currently works as an education equity consultant and has been recognized for her work and her leadership by a number of organizations. Barbara's commitment to character is grounded in the values of honesty, integrity, equity, and living by the adage, we are judged by our words and our deeds. In Barbara's words, character is more important in the preparation of teachers and administrators and management skills and should come first when making decisions about who should be welcomed into the profession as leaders and caretakers of the learning and development of the children and youth of our world, all of the children and youth. Congratulations, Barbara, on being named a 2021 Champion of Character. Thank you, Carol, and congratulations, Barbara. 
A big thank you to Don and Barbara for being such amazing role model, and congratulations again on being named 2021 Champions of Character. Wanda, I'll hand it back to you for the final wrap-up. Thank you, Barb, Dan, and Carol for the presentation of the awards. As we wrap up our program today, we want to say thank you again to our sponsors, Spire Credit Union and the U.S. Army Minneapolis Recruiting Battalion. Thank you to our guest speakers, Secretary Steve Simon and Daryl Thompson, and a big congratulations to all of our honorees. To learn more about the awards, visit our website at www.synergyexchange.org. On behalf of Synergy and Leadership Exchange, I want to thank you all again for joining us today. We hope you all will be able to join us for the 2022 Character Recognition Award Ceremony next May. See you soon.